Guys, I'm telling you, it's not good. I don't want to why why you guys don't want me to watch it. it, it the, I'll, I'll skip on first first version. If it's bad, we're not watching it. Far outweigh the side effects, including our influence. Fossil fuel advocate. What? Benefits of fossil fuel use far outweigh the side effects, including our influence on the climate. Wait, what? Guys, this can't be right, right? Wait, I don't understand it. This is troll. Yep, not just of climate change, but in general, a lot of things. Contributor to Scriber News. I don't know what that is. I think that people are naturally alarmists, and they make things way worse than they actually are. I think the benefits of fossil fuel use far outweigh the side effects, including our influence on the climate. What the I'm fuck? About the environment. Three, two, one, go. So I'm here on some degree. I care about clean water. I care about clean air. I don't think it should clean out your wallet. We can protect the green without it, um, without it costing a lot of green. That's what I like to say. My real problem is corrupt government that lines its own pockets and ends up causing pollution. That's our problem, really. It's what? hypocritical for uh, many people to argue that they care about the environment and yet we see homelessness and we see trash all over the place. And you see that, to me, is the environment. I love nature. I spend a lot of time and my resources to enjoy nature, but I think of it from a human-centered perspective. I want an amazing world for human beings to live. And when people talk about the environment, they often talk about the non-human environment, the unaltered environment, and they think we shouldn't change the environment. And my whole philosophy is no, either we change the environment dramatically or we die. I distrust mainstream media. What Three, the fuck? Two, one, go. <laughs> Ready? You know what? To be really honest with you, you'd have to knock down the wall and put me in the street. <laughs> yeah. This is not far enough. I emphatically agree. I'm like, if I could go, I'd be like going through the door. The media is so corrupt and I can't get out. You guys have locked me in, but that's how bad it is. Economic, the economic growth is stellar, unprecedented, and they don't talk about it. But if the, if the stock market went up 10 points under the Obama administration, there'd be fanfare about it for three days. No, and, and we, have, we have newspapers who are saying they're not going to print any skeptics' uh, um, letters or any articles that are from skeptics. So w the minute that somebody says to me, you can't listen to this other side, that's when I'm going to listen to that other side. That's why Scriber started in the, the group that I contribute to. And it was because mainstream has shown that there's so much bias out there now that there needs to be somebody in the middle that can cut through it. I think it's important that what we can call the mainstream media, they're, they're sort of attempting to do a job that's very important. We need expert knowledge to make a lot of decisions in life, right, including right. decisions I, about it energy is trolling it. and and I guess saying true to and what you said. We need, no, we need the knowledge of different okay. kinds of specialists mm. to inform those kinds of, um, of decisions. I'm well informed. Guys, what is that? Articles about skeptics, they're fucking brain dead. The, the, the brain dead, why, why, would they, why would they platform and publicize actual trash? I don't get it. ...of decisions. I'm well informed on this topic. Three, two, one, go. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm not the most educated person. Like, I'm not ashamed about that at all, with any subject at all. And I think that's healthy to admit some on education, unless you're like the most, uh, the, unless you're the smartest person on the planet. So yeah, I don't understand it completely. It, it, this just happens to be the issue I spend my entire life on, because with most issues, I put myself like way on that side, and I, and I think it's important. One thing though with expertise that comes up is if you're talking about energy policy and, and policies about fossil fuels like the Green New Deal. You don't just need climate experts, you need energy experts too. Because if you're talking about, oh, th this is going to happen in the climate, I'm concerned about that, that's fine. But you need to know, okay, well, if I restrict fossil fuel use, what's that going to do to people? Uh, although I'm not a scientist, I do believe is that this guy, this guy, I am this informed guy is uh, from the perspective of constitutional uh, you know, duty of government, which should be limited. And it should not be uh, giving, we should not be giving away our sovereignty he, to showing. an international body. Okay, that's very important, and that's what I see being done. 
I, I feel I'm informed. I've done a great deal of reading, including this gentleman's book. I've gone to a lot of conferences, both uh, alarmist and uh, skeptics. <clears throat> so I think I've, and, I, and whenever I hear something that I can't understand, then I try to um, find out what the, the real answer is. I know you've done a lot of research on it, and uh, so I, I don't think my knowledge base is as, as large as yours, but I still consider myself strongly informed on this issue because I've looked at the arguments, I've looked at the counter arguments, I've listened to people on the left, on the right. Climate change is real, but it's not something catastrophic. It doesn't require massive government intervention, and we shouldn't worry about it. Climate change activists are often hypocrites. Three, two, one. Oh, uh, they're going to do this strawman argument, did Yes, while, while Al Gore comes and speaks to people about global warming, he has a, an entire, um, about five or six SUVs that are running the entire time he's speaking, plus the fact he flies all over the, the world in his private jet. But those who have money yeah, and they are they climate change again, activists, did. I'd like to see them put some of their bank account, empty their bank accounts, put it into the whole climate change uh, you know, activism. And then maybe I will consider what they are saying. Oh, well, for me, I guess it depends on the activists, activists you're talking about, just because I think that everyone's different. So they're going to be, you know, you're talking about people with money. So yeah, maybe they're hypocritical. I think that most people are hypocritical in one way or another. And so I just feel kind of bad, I guess, saying, yeah, you're hypocrites, you're jerks, because I'm sure I'm hypocritical in some ways. But this guy's even with that aware. said, I think that most of, I believe most of the activists, I think they're advocates. I think that they're genuine. I think that they believe what they're doing. And if they could get rid of every car and every plane and every, everything that's causing bad to the environment, they probably would, and they would probably love it. We, as a Man, one more fallacy other than strawman, dude. If the lashes argument, dude, it can be a call to authority. Um, uh, dude, I know all of them in French, okay? It is hard in English. I know all of them. Or a lot of them. Polar ice has melting. They melt and refreeze all the time. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's a natural phenomenon. We have nothing to do with it. How much of the planet is water compared to uh, land mass? 71%. OK, uh, so polar ice caps melting? <laughs> I mean, I, I think the, it's quite clear that uh, uh, you know, we don't need to try and stop that from happening. I mean, it's, you know, it's impossible. They try to play up that polar ice caps are going to melt and certain islands are going to be submerged. That is absolutely nonsensical. I'm not worried about it. The patterns have been more clearly demonstrated over smaller periods of time. We have nothing to worry about with the polar ice caps. I, I think absent studying the facts on this, you can't have a definite conclusion. So I, I disagree with the idea that, you know, we can't have an impact on it. I think theoretically you could. You need to look at what's the actual evidence of what kind of impact can we have on it, and then very importantly, what impact will that have on human life? If I change the phrasing to, you know, the idea or the thought of the polar ice caps melting upsets me, where would you go? You want me to go? Yeah. Sure. We're talking hypothetical here. This is hypothetical. Well, for me, it's like saying if there was a volcano that's going to take out, wipe out North America, would that upset you? Like, well, of course. And if you can change it, then do it, of course. So yeah, something that big, something that catastrophic, I mean, that is huge, and it would change a lot in the world. I would be upset by that. I mean, yeah, I would be concerned by that for sure. You forget? Sorry, can I ask a qu follow-up question really quick? Just like, I'm just totally curious, because yeah. you talk about human, like the impact that has on humans, it yeah. sounds like you're pro-human over the earth. And I'm just wondering, to what extent are you willing to go well, no, no, to, it's, it's like for I humans? think of myself as, as a humanist who loves nature and who loves the earth. So I think the earth is an amazing place. But I'm thinking about it, like, even when I think about, you know, if I, I don't own land, but you know, I live in a development, I mean, I think of that as we should make that in a way that's enjoyable for human beings. And sometimes that means preserving something that's really beautiful or magical, but sometimes it means dramatically transforming it. I want human beings to have a very positive yeah, relationship trolling. with the rest of nature. So I want mm. us to relate to the rest of nature in a way that we he, he's benefit, baiting, dude. which means, of course, preserving all the amazing parts and, of nature. And I think that's a really important point you're bringing up because, I mean, 
Catast I mean, once again, language, w what is a catastrophe exactly? Are, is it a catastrophe for the animals and plants? Is it a catastrophe mm -hmm. for human beings? I think a lot of these climate alarmists and you know, climate activists, they see the, th there's, like a, there's like a religious thing. They w practically worship the planet in some yes. degree or a sense of guilt about, oh, it's my fault that there's something bad that's gonna happen to future generations. They, they, they give an animist element to plants and animals. That's a considerable yeah. issue and I think that's nonsensical and part of the reason why we're skeptics. We care about human beings. We care, or we believe in a divine order. I certainly do. If I rephrase this to, if the polar bears went extinct, I would be sad. Where would you go? Okay, uh, dude. Polar bear's my favorite animal. But, so I would go here. If it was just that, but I would say that the best chance of polar bears not going extinct is for human beings to have low cost energy. Because what when we have low cost energy, dude. We can basically preserve Is anything no that questions? we want. Oh, no. Yeah, well, no. I don't I hate, hate polar bears. I love polar bears. But I, I think that we have all kinds of bears. So there will be other bears. So polar bears go extinct, so what? What? generations will have a worse environment than now. Three, two, one, go. If, if we can keep using fossil fuels, they will have a good, in, a, a good future because wind and solar cannot, cannot replace fossil fuels. It just can't. There isn't, enough, there isn't enough land mass for enough wind and solar farms to replace fossil fuels if we stop using them altogether. Yeah, I mean, I, I say strongly disagree on the, on the premise that... Okay, this is bait. To Guys, be this is bait. Bait, 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 bait. ...free, including free to use fossil fuels then the world would be a much better place to live. Because the, the common narrative, which you certainly hear from Greta Thunberg, is basically it amounts to, if we are free to use fossil fuels, then the world is gonna end and my life is so bad. Greta Thunberg and anyone younger, they live in the best environment that has ever existed for human beings. From a human perspective, there's never been a world that's more nourishing, more safe, more full of opportunity. And fossil fuels are fundamental because they've what? given us the power to transform the naturally deficient and dangerous environment into an unnaturally abundant and safe environment. You know, it's, it's all disastrous. So every little natural disaster that happens, like fires in Australia or fires in Northern California, they blame it on global warming. They blame, blame it on climate change. And that causes people, because again, the media pushes that narrative, and then people, of course, believe it because they don't have any other information that can counter that. Well, I moved, originally I was going to say I didn't think that the environment would be a situation for future generations, but I'm going to take this from a completely different perspective of the way that the youth is trending right now in climate movements, it's going at an alarming rate. And if things do change and they do allow policy decisions based on, you know, some incomplete data or regressive policies. It's gonna end up creating an environment that's like a third world country, that is anti-human, that is putting people back in a bad environment where it's a threatening environment. So my basic thought is, I think that the world is much more bigger and important than people or anything that people could do to the environment. Obviously people have an effect on the world and the environment with what they do and their actions, but I think the world's gonna last a lot longer than people ever will. I'm willing to change my mind on this Three, two, one. Well, no shit. While I said I was willing to listen to um, arguments, um, I have for probably at least 10 years. I have yet to f see one that would change my mind, and I have yet to see data that would change my mind. But I will look at new data, data if someone shows it to me. I don't think we've been able to have an honest conversation about climate change since the 70s or the 80s. And even though I was That's born in the 80s, boomer. I think we need to have an honest conversation. And I'm willing to change my mind, but it's not at the expense of any policies that will be anti-human. Yeah, I will not change my mind. Uh, I'm pretty much set. My, my personal faith, I believe in the inerrancy. I believe the immutable uh, laws of nature apply and cannot be changed uh, because I believe in the scriptures, the Bible, 
And basically in Genesis, as long as it says that uh, the earth abides, as long as the earth abides, four seasons will not cease. But I would say that there, with the increasing Amen. amount of scientific secular research that is on this topic, it has become more prevalently evident to me that climate change, despite its reality, despite its variances over hundreds of years, not just over a few years, it's become emphatically, consistently so that it's not going to lead to any catastrophes, that it's not going to lead to a massive um, decimation of the human species. I don't think there's many things that I wouldn't be open to changing my mind to, just depending on the evidence <laughs> and, and seeing it. I feel like it's being on a jury of like a murder case. Like, I'm going to look at the evidence, and I'm going to make the best decision I can based on the evidence. And so based on the evidence that we have right now, like, my opinion is set, but that could always change. I think we should always be open to the facts changing, but the current facts are so decisive in favor of humanity needs more fossil fuels going forward to have a livable planet for 8 billion people that if you're challenging that, you're, you're challenging 200 years of fossil fuels improving human life and the fact that there are no viable alternatives for the next couple of decades. True. Right. That's a wrap. <laughs> right. said it anyway, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Your honesty is really refreshing. Nice meeting you. I just oh, chat, listen, IT Bogu. Guys, I hate like political debates in chat, okay, and religious debates, because it's all like, you know, what you what, what people believe in and, and their mindset. So it's like, I respected it. <laughs> Whenever the topic comes up, <laughs> the shit that I see in chat is so funny. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Chat, listen to you guys, 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 I have not have to. I have no beliefs, okay? I, just, I, don't, I don't give a fuck, okay? I, I just... I just... The guy, the guy was talking or whatever uh, about, like, the, um, the thing, and I something in chat said, but leaving a piece of paper. Out. Imagine dying to coronavirus. Losing to a strand of RNA cooked up in a Chinese jungle by a fucking fruit eating bat. Oh no 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 L underscore L Okay.